Ready. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Thanks for talking with me. Um, there are so many things that I think you could draw from after completing the script for Sensor, but I wanted to ask what was your, your, your biggest takeaway after that first read of the screenplay and what was it about this project that made it a must make movie for you? When I first read it, I had to, when I got to the very end, I had to go back and go back 20 pages because I was, I did not see the ending coming. It's like that third act just blew my mind. Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I was reading the first, you know, you read it and you're like, okay, I think they know where this is going. And then I had no idea that it was going to end there. <laughs> so for me, that was immediately just like really exciting because you always want to, try and push boundaries of stuff and do something that people haven't seen before. Um, and so, you know, it's always going to be character and this is a character that is literally in every scene. So you have to like, as an, as an actor, just make sure that you're mapping this, the psychological arc and, and the physical arc. And I just, I love the idea of that challenge. I think the bigger the challenge, the bigger reward. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, and the rewards on this must have been immense because um, to fully inhabit your character, I mean, you really, you run an emotive marathon, I like to call it. Um, I mean, every tool in the actor's toolbox you have to throw in there. Um, was that exhausting? Yes, Joel, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. Yeah, I was, I was, I felt like I had like done a marathon by the end of this movie. Um, and I, I was, just blessed to be to have a director like Prano who acknowledges that if you know I I felt like I could I felt so safe that I could kind of empty the tank every day and know that the next day that she was going to be there for me and she checked in at the end of each day because you know there's no there's very few moments in the in this in this film where the character is kind of <laughs> happy out it's all you know she's she's constantly in this in this state of it's like she's constantly even though it's only until like the third act she begins to like um allow those feelings to surface even though you're like suppressing everything you're still you're still kind of keeping it all down so even at the end of the day you're like oh i have to release it and like let it go somewhere otherwise i think i might go crazy but um, like I learned so much just about myself and how far you can kind of emotionally push yourself and just the importance of just maintaining that it's, it's, it's a marathon. It's not just a sprint. I was going to say, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but was, was this a, a, a hard one to leave at the end of each day? Yeah, it was, it was. Um, and, um, my friend told me that like, if there's a, it's like if you can have like some sort of ritual that allows you just like you know you take your costume off you take your makeup off and they you don't need to like light a candle i know the sense of hippie trippy but it's like light a candle and you you light that and by the end of the time you've you've kind of deraped just blow it out and you can kind of like breathe and know that like you're now Eve. um but yeah it was it was kind of like a character that took like a couple of weeks after rap to just to shake off. Oh, I um, imagine. <laughs> but like, but yet I, I, for me, acting is just so cathartic. And like, I'm just blessed that I get the opportunity to, to experience these different levels of um, emotional journeys and just it kind of helps helps me kind of grow as a person and, 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 and live through someone else. Yeah. Your, uh, your director, you mentioned, uh, I know, uh, she's not only a co-writer um, of the script, but also the director. Um, I mean, this is her baby. Um, first, you know, what impressed you the most about her? That, what was, some of people were talking earlier, it was like, you know, what is it like to work with a first time feature director? And I never felt like I was working with a first time feature director on this. I felt like I was working with someone with like 20 years directing experience. And I suppose what, ex what impressed me the most is the level of calm, the 
that she brings to a set. Mm. Um, no, I never felt like any department was being rushed and every department was being heard. And that is so important because when you you're when you feel heard, you feel like you can bring your ideas to the forefront and not feel like you're going to sound stupid um, or make feel like you're going to make a mistake or be a hindrance. And so when you it's just that whole mentality of just being kind and she is just the embodiment of that. And it's it's I'm just so excited to see what she's going to do next. Oh, so absolutely. Team of actors that get to work with her next because they're going to be queuing up. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, every every director leaves their mark on a movie. And if there was one scene that encapsulates her for you, it, could you pick one? Yeah, it was a scene um, we shot Don't Go in the Church. So it was a, so it's a pivotal scene for the character in, in the story. It's when she watches this movie called Don't Go in the Church. And um, we talked a lot about it kind of leading up to it. And um because all of it was going to be kind of what Enid is seeing is going to be shown kind of on Enid's face and it's the, how that affects the character psychologically had to be kind of conveyed without saying anything, no line of dialogue. And so she asked me, she was like, what do you need? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, like, you're not going to be looking at anything you need because it's just, it's just flashing lights. So if I can get you some sort of um, laptop or iPad for you just to have an eyeline that you can look at and, um, and so she, what she did, she just kind of talked me through the scene and she just, we, we had a playlist that we kind of played just leading up to it and, you know, turned it off. And it was just, I think that is, that was, that was just that feeling of feeling safe. And you as an actor would, will go into those wells and into those emotional kind of cracks for, for someone like Rana. Yeah. So that was it. Yeah. You know, this is kind of maybe a silly question, but I read that you're the youngest of five kids. Um, did being the youngest of five kids help you in an acting career? I know you're kind of always traditionally <laughs> struggling to be heard. That's very true. Um, yeah, I don't know, because there's no other, like my cousin is an actor, but like, like it's in my immediate family, there's none, none of them are in, in the industry. Um, but, I don't know. I think I was also because I grew up in in the countryside and I used movies. Movies were like my friends. And so I would just watch movies constantly to to feel like I had like these experiences that I wouldn't have had growing up and just like it's, it was really it was quite lonely because I was like, you know, my, my siblings were quite older than me. So they were always like away at school and then <laughs> I'd just be hanging out with all my movie friends. Uh, watching TV or watching movies but um, yeah I don't know maybe it is a thing of like when you're when you're younger and you have that idea that you want to be heard <laughs> yeah. yeah well me thank you so very very much congratulations on a stunning piece of work and uh, I look forward to talking to you again one day cool thank you Joel all right take care now thank you bye have a good bye. day you too